Hello everybody, welcome to this short tutorial about the use of point of care ultrasound in shoulder dislocations. Me is Ali Hassan Al Khulayf, I am an emergency ultrasound fellow from Massachusetts General Hospital. Shoulder dislocations account for 50% of all major joint dislocations. Anterior dislocation is the most common type, accounting for 95% of cases. Posterior and inferior dislocations are far less common. Stability of this joint is provided by rotator cuff muscles, tendons, ligaments, and the glenoid labrum. How can ultrasound help me in managing patients with suspected shoulder dislocation? Ultrasound can be useful in many ways. It allows for a fast diagnosis of both anterior and posterior shoulder dislocations. Ultrasound is a dynamic tool to confirm the success of the reduction attempt. Being dynamic makes ultrasound a very suitable test for patients undergoing procedural sedation as a confirmation of the reduction can be done before the sedation wanes off. Unfortunately, both reduction radiographs are usually obtained after the patient has recovered from the sedation. Therefore, if a closed reduction fails, the patient might require re-administration of the sedative or analgesic medication. Ultrasound can also diagnose associated fractures in the humeral shaft or the humeral head. Ultrasound helps in the analgesia part of the reduction procedure, either with ultrasound-guided intra-articular anesthesia injection or ultrasound-guided brachial plexus block. What's the evidence? How accurate is ultrasound in detecting shoulder dislocation and confirming the reduction? The evidence is mainly based on case reports and case series with small sample size. This is a study done by Said Abbasi. The authors conducted a prospective observational study to assess the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound in detecting shoulder dislocation and confirming proper reduction. All patients received ultrasound and three routine radiographic views, AB view, lateral view, and scapular Y view, before and after the reduction. On the result, ultrasound did not miss any dislocation, with 100% sensitivity and specificity. The investigators identified 11 fractures on radiographs, and ultrasound was able to detect all of these 11 fractures. Of course, more studies are needed to figure out the sensitivity and specificity of ultrasound in detecting shoulder dislocation and confirming reduction. Several case reports have been published about the use of ultrasound in detecting shoulder dislocation. The technique. You can use either high frequency linear probe for patient with small body size or low frequency curvilinear probe for patient with large body size. Curvilinear probe is probably is more suitable in most adult patients. Put the patient on a chair or a bed. The operator should stand behind the patient. Make the probe parallel to the ground and the probe marker toward the operator left. Place the probe just inferior to the lateral portion of the scapular spine. Here is the view that you should see either in normal patient or after successful reduction. Let us start with the orientation. Here we are scanning the right shoulder. The marker on the screen corresponds to the right side of the patient or toward the midline. The other side is lateral. This is toward the probe, so it is the posterior side and this is the anterior side. If the shoulder is reduced, 
the humeral head is easily seen adjacent to the posterior rim of the glenoid labrum. Both the glenoid labrum and the head of the humerus are at the same level. This is another patient who came in with significant shoulder pain after a trauma. Again, we are scanning the right shoulder. So this is medial, this is lateral, this is anterior, and this is posterior. What you can recognize here is that the humeral head is more anterior to the glenoid rim. They are not at the same level anymore. This is a diagnosis of anterior shoulder dislocation. This is another patient who came with shoulder pain. Again, we are scanning the right shoulder. What you can recognize here is that the humeral head is not at the same level of the glenoid anymore. It is more posterior. This is a diagnosis of posterior shoulder dislocation. As we mentioned before, ultrasound can be useful to guide the needle in intra-articular injection. Here we will put the probe in the same spot as we mentioned before. The entry of the needle is made around 1 cm below the acromion process. Direct the needle medially and inferiorly and watch it on the screen as in this ultrasound clip. Inject around 20 ml of 1% lidocaine using an 18 or 20 gauge needle into the glenohumeral joint. At the end, ultrasound can be very useful in many aspects in managing a patient with shoulder dislocation. It helps in diagnosis, in detection of reduction, and guiding your needle to the intraarticular space. Thank you.